Okay, we are ready for chapter 32, would you believe? That's amazing. It's a bit of a sad one, this one. But it has a happy outcome, kind of. Mrs. Beloved of the King had a very difficult birth, and then sadly her baby only lived for a few hours before he died. The little one was able to be held and cuddled by his father and mother, and they treasured those moments together. They named him Levi, because it means united, and they firmly believed that their little baby boy would be in heaven, and so one day they would be reunited with him in paradise. For the old King David, when his baby boy died, said, I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. There were, of course, many tears and prayers, but God knew what he was doing, and so they trusted him and held on to his promises and each other. Mrs. Beloved of the King had to stay in hospital to recover physically, and it was heartbreaking to have to say goodbye to one another, but they knew that Mr. Newhart would have to go home and tell the children and Miss Poor in Spirit. Mrs. Beloved of the King lay on her bed and wept. Her heart felt like it was breaking. Oh, Father, she cried out. Why? I know Levi is safe with you, but why did you do it? Why did you take my baby boy? She lay there, the hot tears rolling down her cheeks. I'm not sure how long she laid there. A hundred thoughts were crashing through her mind, good ones and bad. Excuse, please, said a young female voice behind the curtain to her left. Are you all right? Mrs. Beloved the King sat up a little and wiped her eyes. Hello? Is someone there? She asked in a quivering voice. Excuse, please, said the voice again. Mrs. Beloved of the King mustered her courage and strength, for the voice on the other side of the curtain sounded scared and timid, and although Mrs. Beloved of the King did not really want to speak to anyone at that moment, she drew back her curtain a little. There, on the bed next to her, was a young girl. She was clearly nearing active labour, and there was no one there to help her. Mrs. Beloved of the King noticed she had no wedding ring, and her heart went out to her. "'Are you OK?' she asked. "'No!' wept the young lady, suddenly going very pale. Mrs. Beloved the King sent a very quick arrow prayer of help to the King and walked carefully over to the young lady who was now doubled up over the bed. What can I do? said Mrs. Beloved the King. Take my baby! cried the lady. Mrs. Beloved the King stepped back with shock. What do you mean? she asked, quite flustered and very emotional. The girl burst into fresh tears. My family are very cross with me for having this baby and they will not let me keep it. I've run away so I can have the baby, but I know they will find me and then mine and my baby's life will be in danger. Her whole body was shaking as she started to push. She grabbed Mrs. Beloved the King by the hand. Promise me, she almost screamed. Mrs. Beloved the King didn't know what to do. Do you have anyone who cares for you? She asked. No one, cried the girl. I am lost and alone and no one loves me or cares for me. I do, cried Mrs. Beloved of the King passionately, and so does the King. Who is the King? asked the girl through breaths. Mrs. Beloved of the King saw that no one was coming to help the girl, and she called out for help, but the hospital staff just walked by. They will not help me, cried the girl. They will not help me because of where I come from and how I have come here. She held on to Mrs. Beloved of the King. Mrs. Beloved of the King held on to the girl. She felt such strong feelings of compassion for the poor girl, who was clearly struggling. I promise, she suddenly said. The girl cried out and gave another push. And will you take the baby straight away, please, so it bonds with you instead? For I want the baby to feel the sense of love and belonging that I never got. Mrs. Beloved of the King's eyes filled with tears, and her heart bled for the girl, who was trying to make sure her baby had what she had wanted all her life, to be loved and cared for. The girl gave another scream and long push, and her baby's head crowned. Mrs. Beloved the King rushed to help the shoulders and then arrested the baby. He was small and wrinkly, but he had a good pair of lungs on him. Mrs. Beloved the King held the baby to her chest. All her motherly feelings that she had felt towards Levi for those few hours swelled up inside her once more for this little boy. He is beautiful, she said kindly. She looked down at the girl, but she had gone very pale and was not responding. She was losing a lot of blood. Help! screamed Mrs. Beloved of the King, and one young nurse ran over, but there was not much she could do except try to stem the flow. Mrs. Beloved of the King could see that the young girl was slipping away. She ran to her bedside with the baby in her arms still. Listen to me, she said urgently. You are dying, and if you die, you will meet the King, and he will judge you for your life. The poor girl looked scared. Then I am lost, she wept. 
Mrs Beloved of the King spoke quickly for she could see the girl's life ebbing away from her. But there is a way for you to be safe. Jesus, the King's son, died in your place, so you do not have to be punished for your sins. How do I ask him? cried the girl. Just call out to him quickly, urged Mrs Beloved of the King. He will not say no. The young girl gripped the hand of Mrs Beloved of the King and cried out, Save me, Jesus! She then put her head on her pillow and whispered, Thank you, Lord. A beautiful peace came over the girl's face. She looked into Mrs Beloved of the King's eyes. Then I shall call him Ian, for in my language it means God's gift. Mrs Beloved of the King prayed with the young girl and held her until she died and went to meet her Lord and King for the first time. <laughs> Little Ian snuggled into Mrs Beloved of the King as she fed him that evening. Now I understand, Lord, said Mrs Beloved of the King softly, the tears of joy and sadness streaming down her face. For my Levi is with you, and the lovely young girl has gone to be with you too. She is now with Levi, and I am to be Ian's mother. Oh Lord, you certainly do work in mysterious ways. She smiled up into the heavens, imagining the joy on the young girl's face as she and Levi were welcomed into the king's everlasting arms. She looked down at little Ian, and you, my precious child, are indeed God's gift to me and my family, our treasure. The next day, when Mr Newhart returned to comfort his wife, he was shocked to see her with a newborn baby in her arms. She smiled at him and they wept together as she told him the story of how things had unfolded after he had left. The father took off his shirt so he and Ian could have their skin touching, as this is a wonderful way God has created us to be able to bond with our little ones, and Ian snuffled around his broad chest. I think our baby boy might be hungry, smiled Mr Newhart, handing him gently back to his wife. How are the children and mother? She asked as she cradled Iron as he fed hungrily. We cried together, of course. Hope doesn't fully understand it all, I think, but Freddy definitely does. He was inconsolable. I felt dreadful leaving them with Mother this morning, but I wanted so desperately to come back to you. Thank you, darling, said Mrs Beloved of the King, squeezing her husband's hand. And now I have more news to tell them, and I think, my love, the sooner the better, for I see the good it has done both of us to have such joyful news after such heartache. Indeed, I need to stay here a few more days to recover, but I shall have a good distraction, she smiled down at her baby boy. We will need to have the funeral for Levi soon, so the children have closure about him too. I'll do my best to get better quickly. Take all the time you need, darling, said Mr Newhart. But yes, I agree, we should bury Levi soon. He was so little, I'm sure a coffin will not be too expensive, he said, beginning to cry again. The couple held one another and wept both tears of grief and tears of joy. When it was time for Mr Newhart to go home, they kissed one another and he kissed little Ian and whispered, I'll bring your brother and sister and grandmother to visit you tomorrow, my boy, and my, won't they be surprised and delighted to meet you.